Let me ask you about the outlook for other vaccines, especially cancer therapies, which might be also based on mRNA technologies. How confident are you that you will be more successful in that area than with the uh, COVID-19 vaccine based on that technology? So there's plenty of you know read across learnings that we do from infectious diseases to cancer vaccines, right? There's a we see that we activate you know strong T cell responses, which is key in, in the cancer. And I think today we have you know a much broader approach to cancer vaccines, where you can you know sequence the whole you know tumor genome and have vaccines which are much broader than and and addressing the right mutations as opposed to what we had before. So I think no, the, you know there is there is a lot of potential for mRNA in vaccines and cancer vaccines going forward. Yeah, I guess there's a lot of potential. What, what, what's your message to your shareholders? Your shares are down more than 80% because given, of course, because of the disappointing results of the COVID-19 vaccine development. So what will change for the next generation of mRNA vaccines against cancer? And when do you see potential cash flow coming in from there? So, I mean, that's a great question. So you, you see that we have, you know, a strong partnership in infectious diseases with, with GlaxoSmithKline. We, um, of course, are also turning and focusing the company on a bit more uh, beyond infectious diseases. And I think, you know, having a second leg for us strategically is important. Uh, we see that, you know, there is a lot of impetus in, uh, in, uh, in, in the vaccine space in oncology. And so for us, you know, making sure that we come with differentiated technologies, I just discussed, you know, targeting a broader range of, you know, of mutations and being able to work towards, you know, in the end, personalized cancer vaccines with the right, you know, processes where we can manufacture products in a very short amount of time just for one subject, I think, you know, is the target in oncology. And this is something that today does not exist. Um, would you say that there needs to be more support also from the regulatory side of things, or are you okay with the political framework you're confronted with in, in Europe? No, so it's a great question as well. I think, you know, the, the therapies and the technologies are changing so fast that, you know, it pushes the authorities to think of how to look at the different dossiers. Uh, and I think when you move to, I would say, personalized or, you know, or half personalized, you know, cancer therapies, we will have to talk with the authorities on how to get these products through the finish line. But, you know, if we show good, you know, good efficacy uh, and good responses, I mean, everybody has interest to bring, you know, new therapies to patients.